Good evening and welcome to uh, Rupees and Cents. Brought you with the compliments of Selan Bank, the bank with a heart. It is most heartening to know that business organizations in Sri Lanka are getting more and more interested in making a professional approach to every aspect of their businesses. Tonight's Rupees and Cents will be focused on professional training and its benefits to business organization. My guest this evening is a chartered marketer who has held many senior positions in some of the blue chipped companies in the country. He has over 20 years experience in services marketing and he is a veteran trainer. Mr. Dammika Kalapuge, director SIPCOM 1, company focusing on total development. Welcome to Rupees and Cents. Nice to have you on the program, Dami. Yeah. Of course, this is not the first time that you are on Rupees and Cents. It's good to have you again. Tell me, now over the last 10 years, last decade, you conducted over 1,600 inspirational workshops on many different types of marketing and management. Now, when you say training, it has a wide meaning. How do you define training in relation to a business organization? And question, part two of the question, its influence to a business organization. Good. Uh, now, uh, you said that this word training itself has a wider meaning. So here we'll narrow our focus towards uh, the corporate training, the entities, organizations, the training that they need. Okay. Now, uh, organizations recruit uh, staff to perform a job. Now, to perform this job, there are certain attributes that this staff needs. And you call it a certain a behavior pattern which is needed in them to perform the job effectively. Now, behaviors are made out of three components, mainly. Mm -hmm. You call them knowledge, mm -hmm. skills, and attitude. Knowledge, skills, attitude. attitude. So right. that makes a behavior. Mm -hmm. So now organizations will recruit a person based on his credentials and surely to perform that job they would see whether this person have the needed knowledge, skills and then probably to some extent in the interviews uh, the attitude per se. But however once you take a person in right. you got to remold that person mm -hmm. to suit that organization's expectations. In grooming? Grooming and then you got to mold him okay. to suit that organization's requirement. Right. So in the process, maybe that you may have to give a technical knowledge with regard to the subject matter. In addition to that, maybe on the job, you may have to give a kind of a skill. Right. And right. on top of that, you need the kind of this attitudinal chain that is needed to suit the mm. organization. Mm. Mm. So to achieve these three, all in all, you need training. Training. Simply. So now, if you take an example, if you take a teller who has been recruited to the bank, a bank so first teller. of all, that you you got to find out whether he he has the needed knowledge to perform as a teller mm -hmm. at the counter, the way how he's going to handle the machines that are around him, mm -hmm. and then what mm -hmm. and what things that he can do, what and what things that he can't do, he should know that he got to have the knowledge. So that is you call ability. Mm -hmm. But thereafter, while doing that work, he got to develop the the applicability, mm -hmm. right, and that is the skill element. Mm -hmm. So they say <coughs> ability without an applicability is a liability. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so that <laughs> you got to do it, right. and then you got to be thorough with the kind of work that you are going to do. Right. And on top of that, you need the kind of mindset mm -hmm. to suit that job. Now, mostly the training can be classified into two. You call them technical training and then soft skill training. Now, mostly technical tra training will take care of knowledge plus the skill element, whereas the soft skill training is for attitudinal change. Mm -hmm. Now increasingly you find over the last three decades there had been a huge demand for this human resource factor because this is a new subject that came in That's right, from yes. 80s, probably could be after mm -hmm. Tom Peters book In Search of Excellence. So there are a lot of emphasis that was given to uh, HR factor. Now previously it was Personal management. Personal right. management, yeah. yes. Then what happened? HR, human resources. Because the thinking was that human resource is the most crucial resource in an entity, in an mm -hmm. organization. And if you take care of the human resource factor, in turn they will take care of all the other resources as well. 
So HR came in. Then with HR, what came in was HR D, D Human Resource Development. So with development, uh, another letter got into it, mm. got added to it mm. called P, Training, Human Resource Development and Training. Yeah. So now today, many organizations mm. are giving a lot of emphasis for training because to see that the people do have the needed behavior to yeah. perform given This is not job. only in Sri Lanka, exactly. but in all practically over. in every part of the all world. Over. All over. And the good, good sign is that even Sri Lanka, the demand is increasing. Yeah. Yeah.